Hey, it's Mark back for another video. Let's look at some of the things that I've been watching lately. So I haven't kept up with every single earnings report, like because we're pretty much in the earnings season now. And but the ones I have noticed are some of the ones that have been pretty uh, surprising or pretty blowout. So the PLTR, the Palantir, which is you know, heavily into the AI tech and, you know, it's been a really good performer for a while now, but it had most of its run back in, um, 2023 and, uh, like back in 2023, like when people realized, you know, the AI was, you know, the next thing, you know, the Palantir started to really run up in 2023 and it never really went much for the second half of 2023 and never went anywhere rather for 20 the second half and then just recently they just reported their earnings the um, the other day and they had a really pretty much pretty much blowout quarter and the um but the important thing is the guidance and sort of the how the company sees the future looking and the future is looking really good so let's just look at the stock real quick so you can see it it really didn't do much for a long time and then in 2023 it ran up a bunch and then uh it really just kind of hit a top there for a while and um in november and it's just been down until this earnings report so it looks like the street was really sleeping on this one because their earnings report just kind of you know the, look like the conference call was a really big um indicator too of what's going on here and and um, they're really gonna, they're crushing it and it looks like they're um, doing really well. But anyway, so the chart here, we've got, that was a big level there because that's where it failed back in um, in August. So yeah, that was the key level there that about, right about 20 bucks, um, 20 bucks a share. So we had this little down channel that it was in for a while and then it broke out of that, you know, off the earnings and then it just totally cleared the that level and broke above the high from last year. So the momentum is definitely back with the chart. You know, the the AI theme is is here to stay for a while, you know, it's not uh, it's not gonna go anywhere next year or anytime soon because 2023 was just when these companies were building up, you know, that's why Nvidia stock is doing so well because they're just, they're building their LLMs and they're, they're building their models and they're just getting started really. So you have to build it first and then you can sort of see the, you know, see the um, positives from that or the incremental revenue and whatnot. So. So yeah, the stock really wasn't much uh, until 2023, but then now we're like we're off to the races again. So I mean, this is huge volume. Um, it traded. Jeez, I didn't even see that on um, on Tuesday when the um, the, the earnings report. They um, that day it traded 420 million shares, and it was a twenty dollar stock at the time or in that on that day so that's a lot of volume and it traded 250 million shares today so this is very very high unusual volume i think it's the most unusual volume it's even the volume's higher than it was in 2023 i'm looking at these days here in 2023 it had like the biggest days were uh, on that breakout there, that channel breakout, because it was in a channel here, if you can see that line there. And it broke out there and it was off of earnings too. So maybe that's the thing is, looks like there's a trend where the stock just really pops after earnings. Like even here before it just ran a little bit after earnings, but 
course, when the earnings are going the right way. But yeah, anyway, so it traded, it traded 220 million shares on that day, and it traded 216 million um, previously after the after the last earnings before that. So there's two earnings calls here that popped the stock a lot in volume. And then, so that, the volume on on Tuesday was basically almost double that, like double that. So that's just a huge amount of volume um, this week. And it's back to back too, like it traded 250 million um, today. So uh, I was thinking about, I should have put this one out earlier because I, I was paying attention to the to uh, the Dan Ives account because he's the tech analyst and um, he's been all over all these tech companies and he was really really enthusiastic about this about the Palantir because uh, he's usually enthusiastic but he was he seemed even more enthusiastic and because he's just a blowout quarter really so on the quarter they had so basically you've got a breakout so. If it keeps breaking out, it's a buy. I mean, it may retest, but the way it's going out, it's not, it doesn't seem to be like it's going to retest. See back here, it retested on a previous breakout, a uh, previous uh, earnings range breakout. It, uh, let's see. Yeah, it was back in uh, May. So, so in May, we broke out. It broke out there, and then ran again, and then it finally pulled back. And came back to that to that channel resistance, which became support, and then it broke out. Then it just then it really really started running. Um, that was the start of the run, basically, um, 2023. So so that was two days it popped, and then it came back. So we're at two days here. So I wouldn't be surprised if it comes back again. But the way the volume came in, it might just keep going, but. And it was pretty it's pretty non-stop after that once it started going so i'd say it's safe to buy on a pullback if it pulls back it's a good buy or it may not pull back it may just keep going and i wouldn't be surprised if it does but pretty much every stock has to cool off a little bit and consolidate so yeah we're getting above the upper bollinger band there so the upper bollinger band uh 22 can be a, a short-term indicator for overbought it's like the only time i use it and yeah it got above it back in there back in that last um push in may when it started its run in may too it was above the upper bollinger band a good bit so yeah we're way above it so it really it needs to pull back like the that would be healthy if the stock pulled back and you know got some uh Steady technicals again said it's straight up. So you see the stock goes straight up, it can be just a blow off and you know the, the, the volume gets exhausted and then it just has a has like a little crash or something. So so the, yeah the Palantir is hot again. So we're back that was the theme in twenty twenty three. You know their uh stock was doing amazing with all the other AI. So Looks like we're back in business with uh, the Palantir. I traded some calls on it last year. Uh, I didn't catch all the moves, of course, but I did. I did do pretty well on calls on it. So they had. They had their earnings. Uh, their their earnings came in, you know, better better than expected. Like actually, by about a hundred million. Um, they had. Well, at least that's what their estimate. Their their estimate's going to be about 100 million more than they expected, and then the revenue was up a good bit, not like crazy, um, but it's just the comments that they made. The um, the uh, CEO said that that our commercial business is exploding in a way we don't know how to handle. We don't know. We don't know what to do with the onslaught of demand. So, so they've got, you know, a huge amount of demand. So I guess that was unexpected. I think it wasn't expected to be that much. So 
So it has 70% growth in the um, fourth quarter from a uh, commercial. That's really good. Yeah, so they're during the fourth quarter they closed 103 deals in excess of 1 million and 21 deals in excess of 10 million, roughly double and quadruple the respective amounts compared to the same period a year earlier. So yeah, that's that's huge. They double and quadruple the 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 deals from the previous year. So yeah, it's pretty much just incredible demand. So they have a lot of government sales too. I guess that was kind of like the black box, like nobody knew, knew, knew what was going on there. But I, from what I heard from, from Dan Ives is that, I think it was from him that it's, it's become a little more clear now what they're, uh, what's going on with the company. In other words, like people are, uh, the people aren't in the dark anymore. And they've got a lot of job, people looking for jobs too. Hmm. Yeah, so I mean, it's pretty much blowout. And the uh, stock reacted accordingly. So some of the other, so when I see that, I have to look at some of the other AI, AI themes. So like, yeah, NVIDIA is continuing too. This kind of reminds me of, uh, of 2023 where Palantir was, you know, just crushing it every month. So let's see what Microsoft did today. Yeah, it came back up to the highs again. Wow, that may have been just a, uh, good that bad print that day and it's just totally reversed that. So any shorts are just getting annihilated now. I mean, it's not gonna. It's not enough shorts to squeeze it, but if there were, it's just they're not. They're they're gone. So, kind of looks like uh, it's a triangular pennant there. So it's looking bullish. It's right near the highs. And semis, kind of the same. I was kind of. Kind of cautious on that bull flag, but it's definitely still looking like a bull flag because we're breaking over the so we're breaking over the highs. The highs were uh, one ninety five nine. So today we hit one ninety six, uh, one ninety sixes. So yeah, that bull flag's pretty, pretty like pretty bull flaggy and. I talk so much on Palantir, I just, we'll just have to call this a Palantir video because uh, I was going to talk about a bunch of other stuff, but I just wanted to go through the through what I'm seeing here and the bullishness here with uh, with their with that tech and the and uh, the demand that's still out there because they're seeing a lot of demand. And that's good, you know, for because they're a defense contractor. So it's like the you think the defense, uh, the defense stocks would be up, but looks like not so much um, for the industry. But the Palantir is just something to keep an eye on. And uh, I really wish I had bought calls. Yes, yes, I was thinking about it after I saw the quarter. You know, I guess you can't really hope for. Like with, with Palantir, you can't hope for a pullback. Like the thing just keeps going and going. Like I'm not sure, like I didn't look at the multiples. So, so while I'm just doing this video on Palantir, we can look at the, um, we can look at some multiples on it and see uh, exactly uh, what the fundamentals are. Yeah, I mean, if that, if that peg ratio is accurate, it says it's got a 1.2 peg ratio. That's uh, that's incredibly cheap for a company uh, that's as as mainstream as Palantir, and you know some would say fully valued, but it doesn't look fully valued with a peg of 
1.2, but it seems like it's always had a low peg. It's just kind of strange because it's uh because they grow really consistently. Like the growth is just really consistent. I was looking at their trend. Um, this is Yahoo Finance, so it's not always 100% accurate. Like sometimes there are mistakes, but I'd say it's about 95, 99%. So like you see, you look at the revenue trend here and the, um, well, that's their earnings, but the earnings trends are, are beating. They're beating earnings consistently the past uh, three quarters, pretty much, or actually even farther. They were in line one quarter. But yeah, the revenue trend is really consistent. I mean, they went from just over a billion in revenue in 2020 now to almost two and a half billion. So they about doubled rev they doubled revenue in about three years. So that's pretty good, you know. So because their earnings are gonna, um, you know, be even be as consistent. You know, it looks like they're. Um, I mean, they've got good margins and everything. So, well, you, if you look at the price to sales, that's kind of where, yeah, that's that valuation is fuller. It's like 22 times sales. But if they're growing 100 percent, or if they're growing sales, you know, 25 percent a year, or so that's not bad. Well, it looks like the margins aren't that great, but uh, 10 percent. Profit margin is not bad on uh, net margin. So, yeah, I'm not worried about the balance sheet, but uh, yeah, they got free cash flow. They must have a, they must have a ton of free, free cash flow. Yeah, yeah, their free cash flow has been, um, 474 million um, trailing 12 months, last 12 months. That's pretty good. Especially for like a, you know, a tech company or like a company that people think was kind of like a black box, but they're on um, what they do because they have a lot of government contracts. But it seems to be the commercial business is really strong. So I don't know a ton about Palantir, like I couldn't tell you about all the products, but I just know it's, it's a huge growth story. So let's see what the, let's see if they've adjusted the, uh, the analyst uh, estimates. So, yeah, I mean, you see their earnings trend, they keep boosting it, so. Yeah, it sure was a it sure was a heck of a buy, you know, if you bought it back in the teens before the pop here. But uh, it might cool off and come back. I mean, it needs to. It'd be nice if it cooled off a little, had a consolidation. So yeah, we'll just call it a wrap on that because I've been talking about Palantir for like almost 20 minutes now. So so uh, we'll call it a wrap on that, and um, I'll do another video on some other sectors and and the market.